I want to know first and foremost, what's been more impressive, the way Matt LaFleur has come up with these game plans or the way that Malik Willis has executed after only being in the building for like two weeks? Well, what a great question. And obviously it's both, but I understand the question. I think it's Matt LaFleur because, Hmm. you know, Malik Willis is someone that has, you know, had some success, not a ton. And to get thrown into this situation, I I don't, I I feel like when I answer this, I don't want to diminish what Malik Willis has done because it's been phenomenal. What he did yesterday was one of the best performances we've seen from a quarterback obviously that has not been Aaron Rodgers or Brett Favre in a long time. So all of that said, he's been in other systems. He has not had the success. And for Matt LaFleur to realize, hey, here's what Malik Willis's talent set is. Let's cater to him and let's not make him be the man. Let's just let him be one of the men that will lead this group and find that system that's going to work. Don't ask him to do a ton of stuff that he's not going to be able to do. And let, let's rebuild him. Let's rebuild him through this system. And now you saw two games where he's done everything that they've asked him to do to win games. I just I can't say enough about what I think Matt LaFleur and his staff has done over the last two weeks to find ways to win these games, which I don't think a lot of people thought when, you know, because every caveat that I heard all offseason was, as long as Jordan Love stays healthy, this team can be a Super Bowl contender. Well, they've proven the last two weeks, granted, you could say whoever they've played, they have played really good football without Jordan Love. When's the last time you'd say that when an Aaron Rodgers-led team, missed, he missed some time? Did you ever come out of there saying, boy, they look really good? No. You I, never did. That, Matt, that one game, Matt Flynn put up a whole bunch of points, but I think that was the defense still allowed a lot of points that game, didn't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I believe so. I, I just – Again, I do feel kind of you know goofy about saying it that way because Malik Willis deserves a ton of credit to get thrown into this mix and to play at that level. And I guarantee you, everybody that's doing Tennessee talk radio this morning is thinking, how on earth did we draft this kid? He's in our system. He can't play for us, but then he comes down to our stadium and outplays our guy, Levis? What are we doing? What is – where is our – if I'm a Tennessee fan today, I'm asking – where are we headed? Because it doesn't seem like they're in any, they're going anywhere. And it seems like obviously what Malik Willis and the Green Bay Packers did it would just continue to throw more and more doubt at what everybody else is doing. Tra- trade him back for a first. <laughs> for for well, that. Yeah. I, I do wonder, I said this on Friday, I do wonder if he plays well, you know, is somebody going to be, but he's got another year left on his deal. And just think what he's been able to do with Matt LaFleur in 20 days, what that could look like if Jordan misses more time, what the, what could that look like in a year? And then what is that? What is that uh, kind of the process of what the Packers are going to be thinking about doing? It's such a great problem that uh, any of us thought three weeks ago we'd even be having any of these conversations and treading water and all the other stuff. And instead, now you're talking about, oh, what are we going to be able to get for Malik Willis when you know his contract is coming up? It's fascinating. No, oh, I absolutely love that. But also something I'm loving is that defense, Tausch. And for that overall defense, do you think this Green Bay Packers defense has finally arrived? They're finally here. This is a top-10 defense? I do. And I think a lot of it is, you know, obviously Jeff Halfley deserves credit. You know, there were some people that were saying, well, you know, we're giving up a lot of yards rushing or we're not getting pass rush. And I always caution people, you have to look at, well, who are you playing and how – How are you going to rush the quarterback? How can a quarterback beat you? You don't allow them to do that. And I thought the first couple of weeks, it was more of a contained rush. You didn't see guys screaming off the edge. And yesterday, you got a lead, and you really let your guys eat. And I I just love the approach that Jeff Halfley has. You know his guys have bought in. They've said it. And now it's one thing to say it. They're showing it with Jair making a pick six. And you know Xavier McKinney, what he's been able to do, But that pass rush, you finally got a little glimpse of, hey, if we can get a lead, this is what this is going to look like. And eh, granted, their offensive line, not great. But, man, it was a nonstop barrage of pressure. I think you have to look at this group with what they're doing, creating turnovers, and now that pass rush. I I still have questions about how they're going to hold up against really good running football teams. 
But that wasn't the case yesterday, and it was an impressive performance. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I remember back talking with you even after the Eagles game, right? It's like, yeah, the, the, like it was the conversation. It was, you know, was the new defense with Jeff Halfley. What would you think? And I think at the end of the day, I think it was kind of an incomplete because what you saw was a team that had an opportunity to go up early with those two turnovers, and then you can change the way you play. And I, I just like it was intriguing to see the distance that the Packers had on the Titans and how they were able to just keep the foot on the gas. Um, I guess that's just an aside of just the evolution of three games. You have a b- bigger sample size to give more judgment here. Um, now, Kyle gave some wild, and I mean wild, NFC rankings. And I only got there because he was talking about other teams, and I was like, "How did you? How did we get here?" He ranked the top four NFC teams as number four, the Detroit Lions, number three, okay. the San Francisco 49ers, number two, about that. number I two, right the now, Philadelphia Eagles, and number one, the Green Bay Packers. Nowhere to be found is the mid level Minnesota Vikings, he calls them. Very mid. Uh, well, Minnesota has to prove a lot this weekend. Uh, they, listen, they beat the San Francisco 49ers, they have a couple of good wins under their belt. They've had some home games that they've had things kind of fall into place, and they deserve a lot of credit. I think Kevin O'Connell's a good coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what they've been able to do with Sam Darnold, but this is their test. Yeah. And we had people calling into our show this morning, oh, the Vikings, you know, you're running these the gimmicky plays and all this other stuff. And I, what I was trying to explain to him was, well, Minnesota does the same thing. I mean, this this is what these offenses do. You You try and gain advantages on defenses. So – whether or not Jordan Love plays, there's all kinds of question marks we could look at. But just because a team is 3-0 and uh, doesn't mean they're the best team in the league. It means they've gotten off to a good start and that they're building. Now, if they come into Lambeau and play well and beat us, okay, now I'll, then I'll take notice. But until that happens, I think they deserve credit. I need to see more. Uh, now, San Francisco, I think that's the interesting one with Kyle's rankings. I thought coming in here, it's going to be a grind. I think they're, they'll figure a way out to get in the playoffs, and then you know anything can happen. I, th- I thought coming in it was going to be tough sledding for them, and I would put Green Bay ahead of them. I don't have any problem at all with Kyle putting the Green Bay Packers at the top of that list. I don't. That's my boy, Taos. That's my boy. He uh, knows well, what he sees. He knows I have, ball. Yeah, I, well, all I'm saying is y- y- how many other teams are going to be able to pull off what Green Bay's done with their backup quarterback? This is a much more complete team. It's a young team. It's a hungry team. Seattle deserves credit. They found ways to win games. But you have to take into account all these other variables. And who do I think has a higher ceiling that can continue to improve? It's the Green Bay Packers. And I think Detroit is a you're going to be a tough foe. That's going to be a team that we're going to have to go through. I think Philadelphia has proven that they're good and they're 2-1. and one. And So I get to understand if you're a Philly fan, say, how can you say that? We beat you fair. Uh, it's a fair argument. I, I don't have a ton of uh, pushback. I just like the way this Green Bay Packer team is built and the way I feel they're going to continue to improve as this season continues on. Talk with Packers Hall of Famer Mark Tauscher here on Kyle Bruss and Nortman, Ben Bruss, Kyle Wallace, no Brad Nortman. Uh, you know, Tauscher, I know you guys do positives, negatives. We do a little cheers to and pour one out. And I want to think more, you know, uh, long term here. Through three weeks, you know, what would be the one area of concern as this team continues to try and build towards, you know, postseason and longer runs? Yeah, they got to clean up the penalties. And I'm sure you guys, we had a ton of people call in and text and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the penalties will kill you. Um, when you're playing good football teams, you can't get to second and 20. You're not going to be able to overcome that as consistently as Green Bay has had to because of some of that. But I'm just not overly concerned. Matt LaFleur's teams have always been a top 10 in least amount of penalties. It has been sloppy. And you can factor that into a lot of different things, you know, whether it's a new running back or a new quarterback. uh, All of the things that you can go, it's got to clean up because you're not going to play really good teams. And if you continue to put yourself – you know, in behind the eight ball, trying to figure out how to get back from second and 15. And it, it, you're, it's not going to be successful. So that is my probably biggest level of concern as far as where Green Bay is right now. What about Narvison? Uh, because I know that the kick that he missed won't go down in the record books, but it feels as if he missed a uh, field goal in three straight games to me. 
Yeah, but he didn't. I mean, oh come on, Tao. Oh, oh come, come, come on, no, no, Tao. 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 Let the man. He hasn't. Speak. He hasn't made one over fifty. Let He's the, still a rookie. No, I don't. The if speak. the if the Packers are truly Super Bowl contenders, this isn't something where you want to get to Week Eight and have to bring people in. Uh, and they didn't even bring anyone in last year. Yeah, I, it's going to be a concern until it's not a concern. So yeah, I understand it. I I feel it. I mean, I think when you're now at a position where if it's a clutch kick coming down, are you going to feel great about it? I, I don't think you will. He's got to go out and do it. He's made kicks. Obviously, he missed the kick yesterday, but it didn't count. And the reality is, I think that last kick that he had uh, was as pressure-packed a kick for him as you're going to see in a long time because I think if he misses that kick, I do think that they are really scouring what they're doing because uh, you, you, you just kind of felt that. So he made it. I think he gives himself some more time to continue to improve. And I, I really, I'd love for Matt LaFleur to just let him kick one of those bombs, give him a 60, 61 yard attempt. Cause I do think that will free him up. And I think that's when you're at the loosest is when nobody really expects you to make it. Then you make that, you get that confidence up. But I, I anyone that any Packer fan that is saying, yeah, I'm concerned about the kicking game. Um, I don't blame you one bit. I think it's a fair I think it's a fair thing to be concerned about.